Uh, you were telling uh, me earlier about uh, the project that you're doing with Mary Beth, your, uh, 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 your spouse, how yeah. that is coming along. And can you tell us something about it? Well, you know, uh, for about six or seven years now, uh, my wife has been saying to me that we should write a novel together. And I have just been kind of you know, not doing it. And about four months ago, she said it again. And I said, okay, let's talk about how. So we have figured out a way that the two of us, we have very different working habits, you know, and, and um, writing, you know, styles that we can work together. And we're writing a thriller um, that's based on, it comes out of the January 6th um, attempted putsch by the right at uh, in the Congress and, and how it draws in a bunch of different kinds of people and what might be behind it. And there is a, a Russian connection, which is very exciting, I think. And um, I have a lot of interest in Russia. I spent a lot of time there and I've studied it all my life. And so yeah. uh, the, the relationship of Russia to the American political system right now, I think is really fascinating. And so we're trying to get into a little bit of that. So is it like facts or fiction or is it like it's fiction facts mixed with fiction, which is well, it's facts to... mixed with fiction. It's historic. I mean, I would say it's historical fiction, but it's only a year ago. Uh, yeah. But yeah, but um, it's a novel and um, the characters in it are, you know, our invention. But there are some similarities. You know, we base uh, some of our characters on the actions of real people and one of the great things in doing this is that every single day you pick up the newspaper and we find more material for our book because of you know i mean at one point i actually said to mary beth you know how are we going to end it you know, will we end it with like a, a long fleet of black limousines going into mar-a-lago to arrest donald trump wouldn't that be ridiculous <laughs> and then about three weeks later a long fleet of black limousine black cars went into not to arrest him but you know and every time we think, and you know, our kind of tagline for this is the unthinkable happens and you need to be ready to act. Wow. And so that's our, you know, our kind of message is you can't just sit there, you gotta do something. Oh, really? So, uh, so uh, one of my uh, uh, the questions from you is also that I, I look forward to uh, one day reading an autobiography uh, <laughs> about your uh, life. But if you were to write about your life, would you write about uh, uh, your um, th uh, your relationship with Russia or with uh, China or with Japan? Because I know that you're intimately uh, connected with some of these uh, right. cultures and countries. All, all of the above. You know, I mean, the kind of construct I have in my head is that I'm writing about the people in my life as kind of characters and people who who taught me one way or another. I have a chapter that I've mostly finished with the help of my son. That's called the, the most impressive man I ever met. And I've met a lot of people in my life. <laughs> wow, I want to hear that. He was my mother's stepfather. He was a Sicilian barber who had been on his own since he was eight years old. And he de dedicated his entire life to being a good person and being a good man and having a family. And I once asked him in the early 1970s, you know, after we landed on the moon and everything, and I said, I was like 15 years old. And I said, hey, grandpa, what's the most amazing thing you ever saw? Because you know, he was born in the 19th century and he didn't even hesitate. He said the electric streetcar. And I oh, said, wow. what? I said, what about the moon rocket? He said, he says, Andrew, I can't do his accent. He had a very heavy accent. Andrew, he says, once they got rid of the horse, the rest of it was just evolutionary. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it's glib, but he's right. You know, and so, yeah. and there were a lot of people in my life, my father, my mother, you know, my brothers, uh, people I learned from, you know, over, over time in the last year, I would add David into that group. Um, <laughs> because it's not really about me, right? It's about my experience of other people. Yeah. And that's what journalists do. So, and I had an interesting view of places. 